Okay guys, so today we're going to be looking at the MBOT range of robotics uh, from a company called MakeBlock. You may or may not have heard of. Uh, they exist over in Shenzhen, not too far away from, from where I operate. So I've, I've known about these guys for quite a while now and they seem to be going strength to strength in the uh, STEM robotics space at least. Now if I flip this box over, um, you can see that they've got a few models when it comes to robotics. I've actually um, been using the Ultimate range for a while. We, we bought in a lot of the Ultimate 2.0 kits. Um, so I'm quite excited actually to compare those to the MBOT range, which is designed for students up to four years younger. Um, so I'm excited to explore that. You can see that the, uh, the software they're producing um, is increasing. It, it feels almost daily there's more software available. Um, I haven't tried all of these out, I mostly use the MBlock IDE um, and not the Windows or the Mac version in fact, uh, they've got a, a cloud-based version now, they've got a, um, a coding platform that you can use within your browser, browser which is pretty cool. Um, so we can see immediately on the back of the box here the, uh, the things that we'll be able to do once we've assembled our robot we can have it doing things like following lines um, I like that the uh, coding platform seems to be available for the iPads as well as um, for uh, desktop browsers, for laptops and such. Um, and it looks as though there's a there's quite a, an array of things that we can make with uh, with our pack. So I'm excited to open this up, start figuring it out, and to see um, what it is that we can do. Um, so let's open it up. Okay, so that's quite a nice design. I like immediately, it's almost as though we're looking at the blueprint, <laughs> um, a sign of things to come. Um, and then the first thing I can see here is what must be the um, microcontroller for the, uh, the robot. Um, so I can't quite see through this, can I? Yeah, it looks like I can pop it open. If I take this board out, right, so here we go, something they've decided to call the M-Core. I can see some capacitors at work here, which must help us with the, the motor drivers. Um, it looks like we've got a Bluetooth chip that's been um, just put on the top of the board here. We've got what looks like our power, power switch here, um, probably a DC power input here and it looks like we've got four ports for motors and I suppose this must be for sensors as well because I don't see any obvious other ports. I've got quite a large LED connected to the board on this side, that's soldered right on. I've got a light sensor here which is nice so I can start taking um, luminosity data. Um, there's a button here that I imagine might be programmable. And that's everything that's jumping out to me. So let's pop that back in the case. I like that it comes in a case, to be honest, because you don't always want students worrying about the complexity of the board. Now hopefully that's the right way. Um, I don't want to force it, but I also don't want to be so gentle that I'm wasting your time <laughs> watching the video. Uh, I like that it comes in a case. I like that you're not immediately overwhelmed by all of those functionalities and from within the case it looks like you can still reach that button that we saw. Um, I'm not sure, I forget where the light sensor was but I don't see any obvious uh, transparent section of the case for the light sensor. Um, oh, we've actually got these labels so I was right with it being the, uh, the sort of um, DC power connector here, and it looks like we've got a 6 volt connector just here as well. Um, so what were these? These are the motor connectors, right, so I've missed those. So we've got our, our two pin motor connectors here, and these must be for our, our sensors. So maybe we can um, plug in at least four, well, up to four sensors. I can see uh, this section here suggests that probably there must have been a speaker there, actually I'm quite curious. So why do we have those sort of holes there? 
I'm probably not going to put this case back on, to be honest, once I've taken it off twice. Uh, yeah, so just uh, suspected as much. I'm going to get that into focus. That's for a, uh, a buzzer. So there is a buzzer connected to this board as well. There we go. There's a buzzer. Okay, so that's our board. Um, let's take this. Looks like we've got quite a bit of cardboard that comes with this, unfortunately. Uh, sometimes it's nice to have something arrive that feels quite luxury, but maybe we can do that with less cardboard in future. Uh, so it looks like we've got the main chassis for the Mbot. So that's really one big piece, which is um, filling me with confidence actually in, in us having hopefully fewer things to screw together before we can get started with the, the coding and the programming. So I'll put that to one side. And then what came inside of that chassis? Let's have a look. All right, so we've got two motors here. Um, <laughs> always the yellow motors. Uh, for any, anyone that, that orders uh, a lot of their electronics off Taobao and, and maybe uh, has the occasional visit to the Shenzhen electronics market, uh, these seem to be the only motors that that China make. Um, at least they're, they're everywhere. Uh, they're almost ubiquitous when it comes to, to purchasing DC motors. Um, but at least they've got the uh, the ports for the um, for the motor plug-in. At least that's already already soldered on, uh, which I like to see. Um, so it's a solder-free kit, I hope. So I'll put those motors there. Uh, then we've got a bit of paperwork. So we've got our assembly manual. Oh, that's good. So we're introduced to the board. Now remember, this was in a plastic case. Uh, we had to sort of um, break that open to have a good look at the board. I can see that actually most of the components have been greyed out. This is a bit of a, a simplified diagram. Um, we're given a parts list of things that we should expect in the box. So we've got our motors. Uh, use of screwdriver. Now hopefully this comes with the screwdriver. Let's uh, explore further. We've got a quick start guide here. Let me just open that up. So it looks like, uh, well, the assemble the MBOT bit doesn't give us a great deal of guidance, but I think the assemble manual does most of that for us, the assembly manual. Uh, then there's a little bit of, um, bit of guidance on playing with the MBOT, and then there's a bit of guidance on the app, and then programming for beginners. Okay, let's put that to the side. Okay, now if this is what I think it is, this is great, and I think it is. Uh, I love that they've thought of printing out for you the line follower sort of diagram for us to use. That's absolutely great. Um, so we've got that for once our MBOT is built. Um, what else have we got? Let's really get into this box now. It looks like the parts are a bit more kind of sporadically thrown in at this stage. So we've got what seems to be, um, okay, so, so two gears to, to push into the, into the motor uh, when the motor shaft is broken. So this is a, okay, so a repair kit for, the, uh, for any broken motor shafts. That's interesting. Not something I expected in this kit. Uh, we've got our little IR remote, which they've branded, make block. Um, so I suppose we can program our MBOT to respond to these, these commands. And then yes, we do get a little screwdriver. Excellent. Um, I'm not a fan of having to find my own tools while I'm opening a um, robotics kit. I love that they've provided that for us. That's excellent. Okay, so we've got our own little screwdriver. Uh, it looks like we get the gears well, actually, they're not gears, they, these are going to be our wheels for our MBOT. So we'll get two of those. And then we get a couple of connectors for what I assume will be our sensors. Now, what is this? Let's look at this. So this is a... Huh, I don't really know. Is this to put one of our sensors in, maybe? I'll have to get back to you in the next video when I find out what this is. Um, so what else have we got? We've got a... Well, this is interesting. What's that? This is the 
Line follower. Okay, okay. So if I open up this packet, this to me looks like it's got the line follower because we've got the small light sensor and LED. Basically what a, a, a line follower is, guys, or at least in this case, it's a small LED for emitting light and then a, a light receiver. So what we're looking for is if we're on the line, which was in our line diagram, which was a nice sort of dark, dark colour. We've got black there. Um, we're not going to get a lot of light reflected if we're shining light onto a black surface. Whereas if it's if it wanders off that line and it's on the light surface, then we're going to get a lot of light. Um, and I'll do a video on how line line followers sort of work by bouncing back and forth across a line uh, some of the time. So we've got our line follower. Uh, if I open up, this looks to be our. Um, Distance sensor, uh, ultrasonic uh, range finder, I always call them. So it determines how far away we are from an object by bouncing an ultrasonic frequency uh, off that object. So I'd definitely have expected that. Um, then what else have we got? So we've got a battery connector, so that'll give us our 6 volts uh, DC in. Um, I know it's the 6 volts because of the connector that we've got here. Um, Okay, so we've got that for batteries. We've got our USB-C to USB-B type connectors. So our printer cable, if you do any Arduino programming, you'll be more than familiar with that cable type. And it looks like we've got a few nuts, bolts and parts uh, ready to sort of attach everything to our main chassis. So it looks like there's not a lot of um, sort of Lego building that we have to do here. Um, right, I'm gonna get building, you can probably hear my phone ringing at this stage. I'm going to answer my phone, get building, and I'll make another video once we have a working MBOT.